My name is Rochelle, and I'm here to talk to you about death and dying across cultures. So what does death mean? In the past, death used to mean the absence of a heartbeat or respirations, essentially no signs of life. Now, with advances in medical technology that can sustain life and vital signs on machines such as the ventilator or ECMO, death is defined as brain death, where all circulatory and respiratory functions are irreversibly stopped without input to the brain or brainstem. A patient essentially loses the capacity to be conscious. With regards to the concept of death, that is a little more tricky to define. As you know, regardless of where or when we are born, people of all cultures are united by the fact that we will eventually die. However, cultures can vary in how they conceptualize this death, whether it be the beginning of a new life for born or the final end of a journey with nothing happening after death. These conceptions can greatly affect how a person sees the end of their life, including their readiness to die, how much they fear death, and what their funeral rituals may end up looking like. At the end of their life, many people have death anxiety, or the fear of death. This anxiety stems from the conflict between two thoughts, one thought being the instinctive drive to stay alive, and the other thought being keenly aware of how death is inevitable and could happen at any moment. The contradiction between life and death makes us fear the end. Most of this fear comes from fear of dying alone, especially in hospitals, nursing homes, and hospices. There's also the fear of having a prolonged or painful dying process. Among different people, this fear can manifest itself as many different ways, but most often it appears as avoidance of the subject. For example, in the United States, we are what we call a death-denying culture, where we have an aversion to the idea of dying. Death of the body is essentially death of the self, which is an unpleasant thought. In comparison, Eastern cultures often see death as a transition, as many of their religious cultures have a belief in rebirth or the afterlife. Studies have shown that belief in the afterlife as a reward and not a punishment can decrease this death anxiety. However, if a person expects to encounter punishment instead of a reward in the afterlife, then they may actually have higher death anxiety than those who do not believe in afterlife at all. In the slides to come, I want to highlight some key features of death and dying across various religious cultures. First off, we have the Catholic faith. They do believe in a life after death where there are three potential places one can go, either heaven, hell, or purgatory. If they committed a grave offense during their life but did not repent by the time of their death, then they expect to not to enter heaven. At their time of death, they may ask for a priest to come and pray with the patient and or the family. Often the priest will administer sacrament of the anointment of the sick, which includes anointing with holy oils and the reception, reception of the sacraments of reconciliation and holy communion. Their faith does not does permit organ donation and autopsies, and as for their funeral process, they hold a prayer service termed Vigil of the Deceased the night before the funeral. And then on the day of the funeral, there is a requiem mass held to celebrate the deceased person, which in, includes scriptures, prayers, and hymns. And then, at the internment of the body, the rite of committal takes place, and everyone will pray alongside the priest as they commit the body or ashes to their final resting place. For Christians, they believe that death occurs only once. They trust that once they die, they will go to heaven to be sent to God just because God has sent his son to die for them and there is nothing to fear. So in some respects, their funeral is a time of joy more than sadness because the deceased will be missed. At the time of death, they may have a church minister come and offer comfort and assistance to the patient or family. And at the funeral, the family may have a casket ceremony and then bury or cremate the patient after. Next is the Buddhist culture. They believe in rebirth after death, and they have a belief in the endless cycle of death and rebirth called samsara, with their ultimate goal to be escaping the cycle and achieving a state of perfect peace. When a Buddhist is approaching death, usually friends, families, or monks will sit with the dying person and help them feel peaceful. A small statue of the Buddha may be placed by the dying person's head, and people may begin chanting Buddhist scriptures as well. After death, incense is lit. And once the body is completely cold, having left time for the body to leave the body, or having left time for the soul to leave the body, only then can the family wash and prepare the body. Cremation is preferred, but if the body is buried, they believe that the deceased should be dressed in regular, everyday, daily clothes instead of fancy clothing. And then in the years to come, many Southeast Asians will give offerings to the monks in memory of this dead person and wishing happiness upon them. In the Mormon culture, they believe that the body and spirit will separate at the time of death, and then the spirit will reunite with the body in the spirit world, where judgment is then passed. After that, the person will go on to live in heaven with God, and they have a ward bishop who may come and offer support during this time of death. 
As for their funeral process, they also view it as a celebration of life of the deceased. If the deceased was a church member who received temple ordinances when alive, they would be buried in temple clothing. Cremation is generally discouraged in their culture as well. In the Hindu culture, they believe in reincarnation after death, where the deceased person will return to life in the form of another. They also believe in that circular pattern of life and death like the Buddhists did. The family will bathe and wash the body and then dress it in traditional white Indian clothing. And other rituals they might perform in preparing the body include sprinkling water from the Ganges River in India or placing a leaf from the sacred basil bush on their tongue. And after the patient dies, cremation is preferred within 24 hours of death, simply because Hindus believe that by cremating and burning the body, it will help release the spirit. The flames represent Brahma, the creator, and then the ashes may be scattered into the sacred rivers. The body must not be left alone after death until it has been cremated. The funeral itself may last for 12 days and put a severe strain on the family, both mentally and financially. Next is a Jehovah's Witness culture. They believe that when they die, they will enter a kind of sleep that until God resurrects them from the dead. Those who gain entrance to heaven will live with God, but the vast majority of mankind will be resurrected to a restored paradise on earth. So when they die, church elders may be present to offer prayer and scripture. Organ donation is permitted as both the donor and the recipient, as long as all blood has been removed from the organ or tissue before the, before the transplant. And then after their death, the funeral is held at the kingdom hall that the disease attended. Next, in the Jewish culture, they believe death is simply a part of life, all part of God's plan. Their specific views of the afterlife vary depending on their denomination of Orthodox, Reform, or Conservative Jewish, but generally their tradition cherishes life, so death itself is not viewed as a tragedy. At the time of death, a rabbi may be called for comfort and prayer. Also, eating and drinking is not allowed near the body as that is a sign of disrespect. With regards to the autopsy, and embalming, those are forbidden and open caskets are not allowed. A funeral is arranged as soon after death as possible, but it, it is also forbidden to bury on Sabbath or festival days. They have a week-long mourning period named Shiva, where family will gather in one house and receive visitors. And then at the end of Shiva, they light a candle to mark their seven days of mourning. Next is the Muslim culture. They also believe in afterlife, but the body must be buried quickly after death so that the soul may be freed. The Mahdi must also be prepared by someone of the same gender, preferably Muslim, and if they're not Muslim, gloves must be worn. When the person is buried, their body should also face Mecca, or at least in the direction of the east. Muslims are always prepared for death at any time, which is partly why they have daily prayers. They also do not accept grief counseling because they see it as an intrusion of privacy. So keep that in mind when you're working in the hospital. Family members and elders may offer prayers, but excessive mourning is discouraged. Embalming and cremation are also not permitted, and autopsies are only allowed to be performed for medical or legal reasons, otherwise they are also prohibited. Here I want to highlight some funeral practices that are more unique beyond the normal burial and cremation. So in New Orleans, it had once been tradition to have jazz funerals in the streets. Today we still have them, but more for touristy purposes. This boisterous jazz-tinged funeral procession actually fuses West African, African American, and French traditions to bring us this unique display of joy and grief. Led by a marching band, they first play sorrowful and lamenting songs, but once the body is buried, they shift to a more upbeat note. It usually also involves cathartic dancing as well to help commemorate the life of the deceased. In Mongolia and Tibet, which are the more mountainous regions of Asia near the Himalayas, they have a ritual called the sky burials. Based on the belief of Vajrayana Buddhists, they believe the soul moves on after death, while the body simply becomes an empty vessel. Hence, they must return the body to the earth. So as part of the sky burial, they chop up the body into pieces and place it on a mountaintop underneath the sky and expose it to the elements, including vultures, to have it decompose. In South Korea, they have burial beads where ashes are compressed into gem-like beads in turquoise, pink, or black, and then these beads are then displayed in the home. In Ghana, they have rituals called fancy coffins, where people aspire to be buried in a coffin that represents their life's work or something else they loved in life. For example, a businessman may be, have a Mercedes-Benz shaped coffin while a fisherman may have an oversized fish. Other examples have included a Coca-Cola bottle or a really big Bible for someone who loved going to church. With prestige riding on the size and extravagance of the funeral, many family members will use one full year's salary to send off their loved ones in style. 
As you can see, there are so many variations in beliefs and traditions just based on culture or religion or geography. And of course, there's no one right way to do it. The best we can do as current and future health professionals is to learn and appreciate these differences in belief about death and dying and support our patients at the end of life as best we can. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something new today.